when you're ready. In many school systems today, there is an emphasis put on memorization of material where students are expected to regurgitate information rather than engage in genuine learning. Wait, I don't have the remote. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that. This is, this is voice activated. That's not over. Why don't you start over? I'll, okay. I'll, I'll edit that part out. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that was good. That's good. That's good. It's like an air remote. It's an air guitar. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Deep breath. I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's start over. Okay. In many school systems today, there is an emphasis on memorization, where students are expected to regurgitate material instead of engaging in genuine learning. This type of learning only disregards critical thinking, problem solving, using creativity, and developing new ideas. Instead of regurgitating information, students should embrace the learning process, even if that means making mistakes along the way, which leads into my research question of, should teachers be encouraging their students to make mistakes and away from perfectionism? I found that, yes, students and scholars should be vulnerable to the idea of failure and making mistakes, as it can help them develop long life skills like problem solving that go beyond the classroom. In this presentation, I will be discussing how failure can influence success the limitations of this idea, and how different strategies can, strategies can better equip the classroom for these needs. In order to make these steps towards a more genuine learning style, standardized testing needs to be reevaluated. With it being a prevalent testing strategy across the country, I found there to be many flaws. From primary to secondary school, students across the country are compared to one another based off of a singular score. In some cases, teachers are even rewarded based off of their students' achievements and performances, which can create competition with increased pay in the factor. With unreasonable standards that students are held to, it can create a toxic testing value and hinder students' self-confidence and their ability to be creative. By setting these standards, students are also encouraged to learn to gain a higher score rather than a higher knowledge on different ideas. On a standardized test, it is also in the scholar's best interest to make as little error as possible, which can make test anxiety a prevalent concept. This notion can be detrimental to a student's legitimate learning process. However, some countries have made a change to this idea. For example, in Finland, they have made it a priority to eliminate solely basing a student's intelligence based off of one test and making a more collaborative community amongst the teachers. In Hottie Morgan's master's thesis, with the University of Southern Mississippi, she states, in Finland, for instance, teachers meet on a weekly basis to plan and make decisions on textbooks, syllabi, course offerings, assessments, and professional development. When competition and comparison of students and teachers is out of the picture, it can lead to a more accessible and collaborative learning environment where unreasonable expectations are not used. With standardized testing being a significant part of the education world today, students are discouraged from the idea of failure. However, it can also have a positive connotation. Failure can allow students to develop life skills like problem solving or being able to pivot when something goes, doesn't go as planned. All of these abilities are crucial for when a student finds himself out of the classroom setting and then pushed out of their comfort zone. And besides, some of these failures and different inventions have made an extreme monumental impact on the world. According to the article, Failing to Get an A by author Jamie McIntosh, he mentions how Thomas Edison had to fail 10,000 times before reaching the successful invention of the light bulb. Thomas Edison didn't see these failures as a disappointment, but instead as redirection and progress. It is critical that students change their perception of what failure means in order to grow as an individual and a scholar. If we don't encourage students to make mistakes in a contained classroom setting, we can only hold them back once they find themselves graduates being afraid of what might happen if they do make a mistake. Besides, in the working force today, they require employees who are flexible and can adjust to shortcomings when they come their way. In the same article, it reads, yet the working world looks for people who can overcome failures and setbacks for their employers through critical thinking and problem solving. Now it's time to reevaluate how to teach those skills to these 21st century learners. So yes, academic rigor and intelligence is important for success, also, the ability to be vulnerable and adjust to obstacles is vital. It is also apparent in the short story, Through the Tunnel by Doris Lessing, 
how failure can actually be in one's favor. This story portrays a young boy named Jerry as he embarks on a journey to swim through a tunnel, just like the older boys. Throughout the text, Jerry exhibits characteristics of determination and not giving up despite his many mistakes or failures. In this short story, it says, first he thought he must learn to control his breathing. He let himself down into the water with another big stone in his arms so that he could lie effortlessly on the bottom of the sea. Because Jerry was able to realize what he was doing wrong, it eventually led to a success. Students across the world can learn from characters like Jerry and look at failure not as disappointment, but an opportunity to grow and learn. Vulnerability and acceptance of failure can help an individual step outside of their comfort zone and grow as an individual. However, there are limitations to this idea. Being open to overcome adversity and being vulnerable can push someone outside of a comfort zone, but also tell them and give them a sign when to stop and reevaluate oneself. Simone Biles, who is deemed as an inspiration in the gymnast world, is a prime example for this limitation. Simone Biles had withdrawn herself from the Tokyo team final just shortly before, even when she was looked up as a leader for Team USA. Simone Biles was vulnerable enough to say that she needed to take a step back instead of persevering through failure to learn from those mistakes. This limitation can also be applied to the classroom. Students should opt to make mistakes and be vulnerable. However, sometimes it can be a sign to step back and reevaluate one's academic skills. When a student finds himself continuously struggling, it's important to acknowledge their difficulties in order to make the appropriate decision for what the next step in their learning journey should be. Despite the limitations, there is profound success found in failure. While some see it as a setback, others see it as redirection of progress. By giving the students the opportunity to embrace their mistakes, failure is redefined. By giving the students to have a comfortable learning environment, students can also develop life skills by their errors or slip ups. Now is the time for students to obtain an open mindset and embrace the idea of not being perfect and making mistakes because as it can lead to a better future when it comes to applying to college, schools, interviews, internships, the ability to learn from one's mistakes and be vulnerable is critical in society today. Thank you. Um, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process? Well, at first, I kind of focused on vulnerability being a sense of courage and try to connect that to the classroom and being open to trying new ideas. But then I kind of pivoted and changed it to saying, oh, we don't all have to be perfect and we can be vulnerable and being not okay with that instead of it using to like be open-minded and trying new ideas. Okay, thank you. Um, what are the implications of your findings to our community? Well, I think it's really important to recognize that as juniors and seniors in high school, standardized testing is a very prevalent subject with ACTs and SATs. So I think this, my conclusions can imply that students like juniors and seniors don't have to be perfect in when taking these standardized tests. It doesn't define one's intelligence and there's so many more factors that play into what makes a good student. Okay, thank you.